Well, it's a great uh, pleasure to have with us Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu, who's the Chief Minister of, of Andhra Pradesh. Thank you so much, sir, for, for joining us. Uh, I am going to talk at uh, some length about the challenges that you are now having building uh, Andhra Pradesh, especially after, after the bifurcation. But at the very outset, I want to first just talk to you a little bit about reform itself, because you clearly were one of the first big poster boys, if I can call it that, of reform that we have had in this country. Um, when you lost your election, you know, 10 years ago, somebody said it was because of reform, because you were spending so much time pushing economic reform. So do you sympathize with what the government is now saying, yes, we need to reform, but we need to do it carefully? No, 100%. We have to do reform. If you create wealth only, we can go for inclusive growth. There is no wealth. You cannot create inclusive growth. So we have to go for reforms at the same time. We have to keep our political mandate also. There we must be careful. That is what I learned for the last 15 years, 20 years experience. <laughs> Both I have to carry simultaneously. No, so, so actually, if you could elaborate on that a little bit, how do you do both? I mean, how do you, are you saying that you therefore have to market and present reform in an attractive manner? Or does it mean you have to do reform incrementally, which is what I think we heard the finance minister saying? No, that is not the issue here. If we can go through some of the countries or some of our states also, they are implementing reforms, and at the same time, they are keeping people happy. Both are working very well. During my tenure, 10 years at the time, 95 onwards, 94, I started economic reforms. We had some problems, drought, other factors also. I was more of a statesman rather than a politician. I lost my political tinge at that time, for some time. So states suffered a very bad way. Always, economic reforms are not against common man. We have to emphasize that, we have to prove it. So now, in recent times you are seeing in India, even governments are there three terms, four terms. So because of that, there is a continuity. That is what I am saying. Uh, no need to shy for reforms. We can implement reforms. And at the same time, you have to uh, implement economic reform, uh, social benefits also to the common man. Both can be integrated and also we can carry both. Then automatically inclusive growth rate will come. For example, I'm telling you, recent times for the last five months, I'm very happy all of you are here. India is uh, moving right direction. There is a new energy in India today after 10 years. 10 years, we had a severe setback also, economy and also projects and everything. Even corruption, we lost some image also because of all these things, non-performance, policy paralysis, all these things, we had a problem. Today, people gave mandate, clear mandate, after 25 years, 30 years. Mm. 85, they gave mandate after uh, the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi assassination. After that, this is the first time people gave very clear mandate to Narendra Modi ji. Added to that, in our state, we had a double disadvantage. During this time, they wanted to bifurcate the state. You know very well, I promoted on the place, I promoted Hyderabad, I introduced technological changes, I constructed high-tech city, Cyberabad city, which is the uh, main area for us to get money, government revenue also. They didn't do properly, that is what we are saying. When there is a desire by public, you have to discuss with them, and then process has to take place. Finally, you have to divide properly and also carry people with us, that they didn't do that. So I am having both disadvantages on one is national level, another is state level. But I am seeing an opportunity. Whenever there is a crisis, one should not shy away. If you shy away, you cannot do anything. Now I am seeing an opportunity also. I have to construct new capital. I have to construct, build the new state. For the last five months, with my experience, I have prepared so many things. One is I have prepared seven machines. I want to go focus approach. Traditional approach no longer is relevant. With my experience and also 
what is going on all over the world we are studying now with seven machines and also five grids five campaign modes have taken up so all subjects have divided primary machine and also you know, urban machine infrastructure industry even knowledge machine like that seven focus approaches have taken and five grids have taken up to focus every village i want to provide safe water for that water grid power 24 into 7 i want to provide power for all stakeholders for that power grid and also i am taking up on road grid every habitation i want to connect so that migration will stop fourth one i want to do this um, gas grid so that i want to provide gas for industry and also domestic and also commercial use finally i want to go for um, our fiber optic connectivity also technology is uh, changing so many ch- changes every house i want to connect i bandwidth again i am going agriculture one campaign mode education another campaign mode even water conservation and also environment protection one campaign mode and also poverty eradication also now pm has given some programs you are all aware make in india i want to make use of that make in india at the same time made in andhra pradesh that is what i am adding in that so i wanted to promote this concept and also pm has made it very clear second program jan dhan all inclusive financial inclusion inclusiveness that also we are working in a big way and at the same time pm has given some more programs this is these are all important uh, digital india that also we want to connect every house like that even uh, he made it very clear how to work states and uh, center together so we are integrating ourselves with that even swachh bharat we are having swachh andhra pradesh there i am involving public private partnership what i want to emphasize all of you this is a new state we are having so many opportunities even coast is nearly 1000 kilometers no other state is having on east coast we are going to develop already four ports are there another 10 ports we want to develop ultimately we want to make andhra pradesh as a port hub and also gateway for india and also we are having so many advantages their mineral wealth water resources urban development knowledge force even entrepreneurs we are having excellent entrepreneurs even on professional technical and higher education we are very strong okay by using all these things what i want to say everything is possible one experiment i have done recently for the last 5 months aadhar account we have taken aadhar account we are we have seeded all other benefits to aadhar account aadhar ration card housing pensions everything even agriculture loans everything we have seeded now enormous saving only on public distribution system because of this all bogus were removed around 700 crores we are able to save money every year this type of efficiency we are building right so in the at the end of the day when we are looking at what has to be done in india now one of the important uh, things that many of the analysts are saying is it's the states that really have to drive it so while the prime minister and the central government can do a lot to facilitate at the end of the day it will be the states which will be pushing through some of the most crucial steps and equally important competition between states is what will really drive a lot of change would you agree with that thesis 100% i agree with that states has to compete with each other and also market you know earlier i used to compete with karnataka government on information technology the competition still continues it will continue future also it will continue what i am saying we can complement wherever necessary we have to compete wherever necessary it is a, a overall benefit to the people we have to work in that direction then only it is possible even government of india especially our prime minister is uh, promoting india like anything he is creating goodwill 
and also government of india is going to create good policies good environment that again has to be encased by state government we have to harness that then only things will happen so when we are looking at reforms and i'm, I'm you know, coming back to what you what you started by saying that look, reforms is great but you have to keep the politics in mind also it could be argued that many of the most important areas that india now needs to move forward on are not necessarily bad politics either if you are saying that i'm we're going to introduce reform which makes governance much better that's not something that should lose votes if anything people should be happy about that that governance is going to be better if you're bringing infrastructure if you're taking power if you're taking water if you're taking all of this to the people which is again an, an important area again there's no clash between what is good economics and good and and good politics so maybe some of that and there may be some areas where you could argue that you know that you may lose votes by doing the right thing but otherwise it's not necessarily that much of a clash no good governance means everything will be included in that infrastructure definitely it will help us industry it will create employment and also government will get more income it will help us we will provide better citizen services through it then naturally people will be very happy if you provide better education better employment opportunities this are all one cycle according to me okay. but what we have to keep in mind some welfare programs also for the disadvantaged and also vulnerable sections we have to meet i think there's a there's a call that you just have to take right now hmm? yeah it's okay you guys nice. switch the mic off you're ready inside yeah yeah you can this is not necessarily a call we, i mean actually we don't mind if it's a call that's broadcast hey, can you <laughs> it's off it's off sir it's off yes. yeah 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 okay hello hello the temptation to put up that mic Uh, we'll just take a five-minute break. Yeah. That, just in case you're wondering who could interrupt a session like this, that is the prime minister. So, we will pause. tap dancing but actually yeah we could, we could we could perhaps you know throw it open to the audience who wants to fill in if if any any of you have ideas on how to run andhra pradesh or the nation better i, I could invite you up for 5 minutes sunil any other volunteers sir how to do it not nashad how to do it the stanford way sorry <laughs> actually acha sir that leads me almost uh, directly to the next question that i was about to ask you so it was <laughs> it was it was rather well timed which is that in this in this effort now when you, so when the states have to work with the center the fact that you are in alliance with the center and the fact that the prime minister himself is also you know keen on doing a lot of these things does that make it make it easier and how closely are you working with other nda members and and with the prime minister to to roll out development no for development political relations is one angle and at the same time close rapport with government of india with the different ministries are also very important so that we can do better job that is what i am working we are working very closely with the government of india with all departments for that matter so the bjp has not necessarily been having the best of times with some of its other allies how are relations with the ndp with the tdp going no what i am saying for uh, political things are different but what pm is doing extremely well so country has to encash all these things we have to work together all other chief ministers has to work with a center now 
That is only the way. But there are no alliance problems for you? Like for me, no, no, no other problems. None. We are not facing any problem. <laughs> okay. I, so, I mean, I think that's one of the other questions that everyone, I'm sure, is waiting to ask you. There's this cabinet reshuffle taking place. So is that something which you might be going for another berth in addition to civil aviation? Let us see how things are going to happen. Another couple of days, we'll know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was sufficiently no, mysterious. He, he, he is also very keen to get information from me. <laughs> I'm also very keen to hide information from him. <laughs> so you will, you will appreciate the fact that we didn't boost the mic during that conversation <laughs> to, get the, to get the direct answers as you were speaking to the Prime Minister and to find out what exactly is no. being said. So we should wait for a couple of days to get the answers. Yeah. You'll see the what is going to happen in a couple of days. Okay, fine. That's, that's, I think, as much information as we could get. But interesting indications from that. I'm, I'm going to start reading between the lines uh, a, a little bit out there. <laughs> so um, at, the, at the end of the day, though, you know, this is one of the things that, when you're looking at what the, what the central government is doing also, you are a member there. So in addition to what you're doing in the state, and I'll, I'll come back to Andhra and the challenges of building our infrastructure there. But what would be the sort of advice that you would be now giving when you're talking to the Prime Minister, when you're talking to Arun Jaitley, when you're talking to others? You should be saying, look, been there, done that. This is what you people need to be doing. Send out this message, do it in this manner. What is your basic advice? No, what I'm thinking, it is a very inspiring time for governments and also for industry and also for citizens of this great country, according to me. We suffered badly for the last 10 years. Now we are having all advantages. Now PM has created goodwill all over the world. We are having an advantage of aging factor. Now by 2020, India average is 29 years, youngest in the world. Compared to China, around 10 years difference for us. So if you compare all this, to even in the near future, 10, 20 years, India will have this advantage even another 30, 40 years, compared to China and other countries. So we have to make use of all these advantages. Politics, certainly, if you perform, people will vote. There we will be careful. And at the same time, development is the most important thing, according to me. Now, when you are doing all of that, uh, it's, it's obviously very clear that one of the major things that's required is infrastructure. And that's going to be particularly true, I think, for your state, where some of the plans that you've got, these greenfield airports, you want to build highways, you want to make all that connectivity, you will, for example, need to acquire land. You will need to you know, build that infrastructure. What is it that you're telling you know, people in this room and elsewhere? How can that be facilitated? Uh, we are, for example, hearing talk that in the winter session of parliament, there will be changes to some of these laws, like the land acquisition bill and others. No, India, you are all aware, 15 years back or 17 years back, I started uh, building infrastructure on BOT, BOT, PPP models. Even Hyderabad, you are aware, airport, one of the best airports to have built. At that time, everybody asked me, where is money? Even the then Prime Minister asked me, there is no money. Then I requested him, we'll go, BOT model, it is available. Greenfield airport, we have to go. Then only 20% share capital, we are able to build that airport. Because of that airport, government is getting money now. Even road infrastructure at that time. I visited Malaysia. I have seen that road east-west corridor. Then uh, I requested Prime Minister Vajpayee at that time. Then uh, he said, it is a good idea, we'll go ahead. Then they built that uh, golden quadrilateral road. There are some problems in viability. Sometimes expectations versus to achievement, there may be some problems. Their government has to play a major role. For the last 10 years, we are seeing there are some scams. And at the same time, 20,000 megawatts of power stations are kept idle. This is a national wealth. So how to sort out this type of problems, policy decisions, government has to take decision. Ultimately, there are so many opportunities, but it is possible through public-private partnerships. Hyderabad, 165 kilometers of outer ring road. At that time, we created six to eight lane road in Hyderabad. Yeah. Well, the infrastructure is very crucial. And at the same time, government is having limited money. How to use that money 
utmost efficiently for building infrastructure and also other purposes. That is where we are. Well, you've, you've actually also reached out directly to many in industry and you've asked them to join you and join various panels on how to do it. So um, I, see, I, see, I see Sunil Munjal there, who's one of the people uh, on that. So perhaps uh, if we can get a mic to Mr. Munjal, he can also share some of his suggestions that I'm sure you're, you're privately communicating, but we can mm. get you to talk about it here. Can we get him a mic? Mr. Naidu, you talked of infrastructure, which clearly is, is something you did a brilliant job on uh, last time around uh, when you transformed Andhra Pradesh. Uh, there is a need also to build requisite skills and attitude in the people. Are you also thinking of what you can do to education and vocational skills? Is it, for example, possible for you to allow from class seven or eight onwards a parallel stream for those individuals who do not want to join universities to get vocational certification to be available for, for the large number of jobs which will get created through this infrastructure. No. Can development, one of the things, of course, that's also there in the Prime Minister's list too. No, even Prime Minister's list, that is our one thing. And at the same time, we are going in a big way. There is one mission. This is a skill development corporation mission. This uh, skill, public knowledge development mission, their public-private partnership, what is uh, there in Delhi also, same model we are conceiving. Even um, I requested uh, GMR, chairman of G GMR, Malikarjan Rao is the chairman for the uh, corporation. What are all the required skills? What is the gap in skills? How to use existing infrastructure? How to create more infrastructure? Even private uh, people also are having certification. We want to use that, even Tata, like that. All these things we want to integrate. Finally, we need bandwidth. What I am thinking, every house, proper high bandwidth if you connect fiber optic connectivity. Then from home, you can learn continuously. For doing things also, you can go through what all you wanted to go through. Then you can go to this workplace, you can do that work. Like that, we are thinking, this is skill upgradation is the biggest issue in India. There are so many people which are all unemployed or underemployed. And at the same time, all employees are feeling we don't have proper persons. There is a mismatch between the two. If you do skill upgradation and also modernization using modern tools, then our productivity will improve. Our salaries will get better salaries. That is where we are working in a big way. You know, this is only a psychological issue sometimes, sometimes practical training. In Andhra Pradesh, originally we had only 30 engineering colleges in 1994. I started going on increasing, we made it 300 engineering colleges. With that three engineering, 300 engineering colleges, I produced number of engineers. All over the world they are working, they are sending back money to home. That is how economy has changed totally. So the year I am in involving private partnership also in that corporation. Both of us sit together. Even best quality of education also how to bring, how to network universities outside, how to get best practices and also knowledge. All these things we are working now. Let me can we have that mic back up here? Uh, last time around, you've done a fantastic job on services, especially in the uh, knowledge area, IT services, etc. There are two other areas which need the same kind of attention. One, of course, is manufacturing, which has become a national mission right now. Second is agriculture. Agriculture offers the highest potential for value add in India. Are you looking at growth in agriculture and Agri Plus in terms of processing, logistics, etc.? Uh, because they, those are state subjects where you can make the difference yourself. No, what I'm saying, I'm having seven missions. One is primary sector mission, agriculture and allied. Always we are talking agriculture. Allied are getting more income compared to agriculture now. Agriculture is one. Horticulture, if you see, around in Andhra Pradesh, 35,000 crores from agriculture GSDP. Same amount is getting from horticulture. Around 25,000 crores or 30,000 crores are getting from dairy and also livestock. 
and also 15, 8, 20,000 crores from fisheries. These are all the areas one has to concentrate. Even value addition is very, very important. If we add value, then we'll get more money. Now we are working in primary mission, ICRISAT and also best universities in the world, how to go for soil conservation, soil testing, then how to balance micronutrients and also best practice in agriculture, modernization, mechanization, ultimately better yields, how to make it agriculture profitable. That is our motto. Even exports, that is what we are. Like that, all these machines, if you see, urban machine, same thing, urban infrastructure is very poor. Now urbanization is increasing day by day. I am planning three cities, mega cities. Best infrastructure, metro, international airports, best uh, uh, public transport, everything we are working there. And also social empowerment. We have to balance all these things, skill upgradation, social empowerment, how to improve their wages, income, and also better living standards that we are working. And also infrastructure is very crucial. We are emphasizing on infrastructure. It may be road infrastructure, rail infrastructure. Andhra Pradesh is located in such a way. All ports are available. From their interland, how to connect, not only in Andhra Pradesh, even outside Andhra Pradesh, and also interland of India. That is where we are working. Even airports in a big way. So this is a, again, service sector. All of us are talking only some of these areas where our income is coming more in service sector. Service sector, less investment, more income. For example, if you spend 10 lakh, of, 10 lakh rupees on agriculture, you will get 40 persons employment. Same 10 lakhs if you spend 10 to 15 employ, employment in industry. Same 10 lakhs if you spend in tourism, you will get 60, 70 empl yeah. employment. Huge potential for employment in tourism, service sector, real estate, construction, or banking. These are all the areas where you can little investment and also overall economy also will be integrated. If you concentrate there, we'll get more and more employment and also economy. I am concentrating on focus approach this time. Right. Let me see if I can get another couple of questions in. We're almost out of time. Yeah. Uh, it's come to you. Uh, first of all, you know, compliments and congratulations about the way you've handled the recent natural disaster. You know, you've done a commendable job. We, we are a great admirer of what you've done, so I'd like to congratulate you for that. Sir, you have a plan uh, about creating entrepreneurs, which is very unique. Would you like to share that with us a little more? Because that's something very unique that you've yeah. got. Please. Thank you, sir. This is one thing I wanted to tell you how I have done, that is the need of the hour. Andhra Pradesh was an agrarian state. We had only agriculture base. Then I started colleges, that is one angle. Then I thought how to promote entrepreneurs. Entrepreneur is very, very important to create employment, to create wealth. Even for future, maybe micro, macro, sub-micro, Entrepreneurs are very, very important. One day I called all my bankers. I told them, you have to help our uh, industrial friends liberally so that they will develop. Then they told me, your entrepreneurs are very bad. They will spend money on non-performing asset or they will divert money. We are not going to finance. Then I told them, my entrepreneurs, this is your money. Why you are doing like this? Then going on talking to them. Then I used to took our entrepreneurs all over the world as a delegation. I used to visit once in six months, one country. Mm -hmm. I used to take delegation. Because of that, there was a network, excellent network. And also, they are exposed to international enterprising best practices. Ultimately, our entrepreneurs are number one even today. All second generation entrepreneurs, if you see, Delhi airport, and also Hyderabad Airport built by GMR. Even GVK, Bombay, and also Bangalore Airport, power projects, pharma. So many projects, if you go through, they are doing good work. Now, this is where India needs more and more entrepreneurs we have to promote. 
It right. may be SMEs, it may be infrastructure, it may be uh, tourism, it may be small scale, you name anything, we have to promote them. Now we are having 7 lakh women groups, around 80 lakh poor women are working. Recently I have given one job for them, I want to make every woman that poor woman as an entrepreneur. Sand, sale of sand, I entrusted to these groups now. I have a network computerization, information technology with GPS, GAS, out to pro clients and also bank connectivity, everything I have done. We will track from Hyderabad, around 115 reaches. All reaches are handed over to women groups. If they pay money, any consumer wanted to have sand, right? If you pay money and network it, and then automatically sand will come to your doorstep. This is where I have done. I entrusted this job for women groups. It is possible. Now I am having understanding with the Google and also Facebook, all these are chains. Now I am working how to make it online trading. Even agriculture produce I am putting on online. So that commodity trading, if you go, they will get 10 to 15 percent more income. So entrepreneurs are very, very important. Consciously, if you promote entrepreneurs, India is capable of producing entrepreneurs. Need of entrepreneurs is very huge. I gave a call for every family, one computer literate, one entrepreneur. I may not achieve that. Even incubation centers I am starting. Startup villages I am starting. Startup companies I am promoting. Even doesn't matter if you lose some money, but we have to promote startup companies. We uh, talk about the, about the disaster that happened. You weren't very happy with industry. I believe you really ticked off some of the telecom <coughs> companies saying they could have done a better job. No, but they have done a better job. After that? No, from the beginning, but I was very eager to push them further. I pushed them. <laughs> but ultimately, they have done a very good job. Push them I, further. For, further. For doing the right thing. Because uh, what happened, this is a case study for all of us. There are some cyclones in India. There will be some emergencies. At that time, we have to raise to the occasion. Day one, the velocity is very huge, very high. 250 kilometers, some people are saying 275 kilometers also. Local radar failed completely. They stopped it. Then immediately I went there. There is no water. There is no power. There is no telecommunication telecommunication, there is no road infrastructure. Lacks of trees were fallen. Then we have moved. Next 36 hours, PMS come. The amount of response by public, PM also felt very happy. First time I am seeing the mood of the people positive. I really appreciate it. That is the comment he has made. At that time, I was very harsh for everybody because in emergency, state has to produce results. Even private sector, government, Everybody, I was very harsh. Within three, four days, I brought normalcy. Right. This is how I have done. There, I am very happy, even in industry, they are helping me. Even huge uh, help they are extending. There, I told them very clearly, not money. You come and construct some of the, adopt some of the villages for construction. That will go a long way. Right. Um, you, of course, one of the first people who spoke a lot about, inf about IT, you know, one of the very first people in the country who said IT is going to be so crucial. Now, we are hearing a lot of complaints coming, including the SoftBank chairman was just here, spoke to the prime minister and said, if you want to build information superhighways, you can't be dividing up spectrum into bicycle tracks or, you know, words to that effect. Uh, this might be one of the areas where you can advise the government also how do we sort this out? Because it, if India is going to be a connected country, at some point we've got to figure out how are we handling spectrum, how do we make sure there's proper broadband that's available to everybody. And I can't think of anybody better than you to be able to explain this in the political circles. No, this is uh, what I'm saying from the beginning. I was very keen because of bandwidth at that time. I fought with the government of India, the then Prime Minister Vajpayee. At that time, there was BSNL and VSNL. There are two public sectors which are all monopoly. Mm. Then I went to America, I have seen, because I promoted information technology in a big way, I need bandwidth. Otherwise, I cannot connect America or other countries for that matter. So at the time, copper raw material was there as a 
for, for bandwidth. Then that was uh, sometimes they used to cut and melt it and sold, all these things are happening. First time all the way I went to America to witness all these things in Lucent technology, manufacture unit I have gone, I have seen that is the best way to go for fiber optic connectivity. This laying fiber, it is not a big issue. It is very cost effective. It, if they spend what I am thinking on communication and also fiber, if we spend more money, we have to consider this is the best infrastructure. Then growth will be multiplier effect. Economy will help like anything. So our people are thinking, I want to request the government of India. They are thinking to connect panchayas. Panchay, connecting panchayat is not an issue in 10 uh, MBBS. That connectivity, it won't help anyway. Every house, minimum 100 MBBS we have to provide. High every house, every house, MBPS. every house. Then only you will have access to everything. So that is how we have to work it out. Otherwise, by connecting panchayat, what we, can, we have to go. Is that a realistic? It is realistic. It is not a cost, uh, very costly. What I am thinking, 4G, you, everything is coming. And you coming. think you've got a good chance of convincing the Prime Minister on that? We'll convince, we'll uh, take it up, and uh, I will prove it. We'll lay in Andhra Pradesh. Within one year, one and a half year time, I want to go for every house there is a bandwidth. High bandwidth, I will connect. All yeah. information, everything will be accessible to them. I want to provide that. 100 Mbps into every home, I have to yeah. say, would, it probably would be one of the most revolutionary things that India no, would we have, have to done. do it. It is not a cost. India will then almost certainly no. be a... A no, major, it, major, have a control on the digital economy, which is going to be the major thing to roll out. Yesterday, I visited our uh, Cisco center also, development center also. Now, this quality content is very, very important. They told me one thing. If you pay 10, 60 rupees for head, for student, then we will have digital classrooms. That means five, six schools or seven, eight schools, best teachers they will take classrooms. Same classroom, six, seven classrooms, interactive session like that. Then quality education will come. Quantitative, qualitative content will come. This is where we are very much interested, I am telling you. Even if you say skill upgradation, agriculture, or village, life to death, mm. we are having so many activities. How to provide, how to give best practices across the table is important. Nowadays, if you see youngsters, students, how brilliant they are. World class, I'm telling you. Only problem is they don't have infrastructure. If you provide infrastructure, they will do wonders. They will learn. Our teachers, compared to teachers and also students, they are all equal. If you provide infrastructure and also IT, computer, then they will uh, learn better than the teacher. Teachers are not uh, that capable today, but they are forced to learn. This is only the way to bring revolution after it. Some people see. told me at the time, I told them six-lane road. They told me, where is money? I told them, we have to compete with Singapore, we have to compete with South Korea or other countries. They heckled me at that time. Today, what is happening? India is competing with everybody. I am confident another 15, 20 years, India will be top among three or we will be number one that is going to happen. One or two, not that. We will well, surpass Nadu, America you've, also. You've always been visionary in these things and I have to say that's a really visionary idea. I've just heard 100 Mbps into every household in India. If that can be achieved, it will really be transformative. One last question. I think we have time for the gentleman there. Very impressive thoughts, uh, Mr. Naidu. I just want you to tell us what are the challenges that you foresee? And two particular challenges that come to my mind. One is how are you sorting out the interface issues with the central government? And B, how are you going to communicate to your own people and create a constituency for private sector which is going to drive growth in your state? No, it is a continuous dialogue. There is an NDA government. For example, I'm telling you, our state after bifurcation, my neighbors, if you see, Telangana TRS government, Karnataka Congress government, Tamil Nadu again, DM, ADMK government, even Delhi, NDA government, and also Varissa, 
that is again BJD government. So I had to work with all these people to bring some consensus for be overall benefit of the society. And at the same time, we had to communicate people also regularly what is the benefit we are giving. One example I'm telling you, recently we used to give 200 rupees pension earlier. 200 rupees is nothing, so they are facing miserable problems. I increased to 1,000 rupees, five times hike. How to select it, then there is an issue. Then I got all information, Aadhaar account, seeded all these accounts, either ration, even uh, their age, their land records, everything I have seeded. Then I put it, this uh, information on the computer. Then I assess eligibility criteria, big data, how to evaluate all these things, I gave a program. 10 lakh bogus pensioners are there. Straight away I removed 10 lakhs out of 47 lakhs. Then age difference or sometimes our uh, administrators, how they have given male, they have given fem widow pension. That is how they are, even 20 years boy, they used to give pensions. So all these things we are, even 40 acres of land, landlord, they used to give pensions. I eliminated all these things. Then I sent it to the field. Again, they selected six lakhs, those who are all eligible. I brought it. Again, I put it on big data and then I uh, scrutinized. One and a half lakh has gone. That means three and a half, four and a half lakhs were remained. All these things put together, I sent it for distribution. Now I am doing one thing. All pensioners, first date, I can give across the state on through various banks. They can get to bank, he can take. There I am introducing this Aadhaar account, all fingerprints. Only that person has to go and draw money. Previously, we are having 9 lakh people every year uh, or uh, new born babies are coming or some people are dying. Around replacement level, we have reached more or less. Here, every month, 30, 40,000 or 50, 60,000 old people are dying. Every month, they are drawing money. Who is drawing? Middlemen are drawing. Because of this system, every month I am going to have saving another 40, 50,000. I can go for new eligibility candidates. This is where I am saying everything is possible. It is transparent. People will appreciate. In one village, if you give desiring, deserve, deserving person top, then nobody will question. If you avoid him and give other person who is uh, better off, then problem will come. Transparency is important, justice is important. Okay. If you do eligibility, then all things are right. Well, we are flat out of time, and I'm going to give that lady a chance to ask a very quick question. If you can just pass the mic to her. One last very quick question, then we have to end. Hi. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sindhur Mittal from Wellspun Energy. My question is, you uh, very uh, rightly said telecom for every house. But before telecom, what about power for every house? So I wanted to hear from you, and we heard Minister uh, of Power this morning talk about 100,000 gigawatts of only solar by 2022. That's the new plan for the government. So I wanted to hear from you about the plan for Andhra Pradesh for power and specifically on renewable energy. No, I will be very happy. You know, power, I was the author for uh, reforms. That is in uh, 96, 97, 98, I brought reforms in power sector. Then only generation companies, distribution companies, transmission company, three companies I have divided. And also we constitute regulatory commission also. Because of that, by 2004, we are able to uh, reach surplus power. Again, 10 years, they created all problems. There is a power deficit now. We are having problem. For the last five months, I improved the efficiency of uh, generation stations, PLF. From 65, I took to 85 and 90% now by linking coal and also efficiency level, everything, planning, everything. Even Government of India, I had an understanding with them. This is a MOU, 24 into 7. Uh, that means every village I am going to give 24 hours power, agriculture 7 hours, 
and also 24 hours for industry. Even big industries, I am going to have dedicated uh, feeders. Now we are having 10,000 feeders from Delhi. If your unit is situated somewhere, you can monitor power situation from your office. What is the quality? How much time? How frequency? Any power cut? All these things you can monitor online. Now, not only this, cost effective power I want to go. We are having some advantage of ideal, I am taking that. Then thermal, we are having gas, that also we have to integrate. And finally, solar energy we are going. With the government of India, they have given 200,000 solar power for next one year time. This is a, a, one of the biggest park in the world itself. They are establishing in Andhra Pradesh. NTPC is going to develop 1,000 megawatts, another 1,500 megawatts, government of Andhra Pradesh, by tenders, we are calling. 500 crores they have given for infrastructure also. In evacuation lines, they are working. Finally, cost-effective power, and also efficiency, we are going in a big way. LED lights, throughout the state I am going, that is 400 rupees for each bulb. We are collecting 10 rupees from consumer, the saving amount we are going to repay for five years, six years. Any bulb is burned, that is the response of the manufacturer, he will get it done. Even agriculture pump sets, I am going for efficient agriculture pump sets. This is one more exercise I am doing. 25-30% energy we can save. Every one unit of energy is saving. That means two units of production additionally. So this type of uh, clear-cut uh, um, uh, action plans I have prepared. Every day it is a CM dashboard is there. I will know how much power we have generated, how much relief we have taken, each feeder. Then ultimately I want to link everything. In Andhra there is an advantage also, new Andhra Pradesh. People are very honest in some parts of the state. Even uh, theft is very less. The, practically there is no commercial loss in some of the places. This I wanted to uh, motivate people. Ultimately, no theft, no commercial losses. Even technical losses I want to reduce maximum extent. Uh, in uh, one place, if you see Andhra, that is one discom company, around 8.5% commercial losses and technical losses. This is uh, the best in India itself. Even in Delhi, nowhere they will do that. So all these things in a Big way, in Andhra Pradesh, I am assuring you, we are having power 24 into 7. And also, we are having water, no problem at all. And also, we are earmarking lands, SEZs, huge land, one SEZ, 30,000 acres, 20,000 acres, like that I am earmarking. And also, best policy I can create for you. No, you need not go to anybody. Once, if you come and set up your industry, intention, then I will put it online. All clearances, I will get it done. Even deemed class I am introducing. I am thinking, if everything is right, 30 days, I will get all clearances. After 30 days, it is a deemed class provision I introduce. You can go ahead with your construction. It is the responsibility with the government, not with the industry. Like that, I am working. Everything possible. It is possible. Once in a month, there is a meeting, State Investment Promotion Board. There is an escort officers. I will provide at escort services. Uh, when you come, our escort officer will be with you. Assistant, executive assistant will be with you. You will get it done, everything. Uh, so, all sound like really exciting times, Mr. Naidu. It's always a pleasure listening to you and talking to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.